Dr. Farai. Thanks a lot. Man. Excellent. Thank you guys uh, so much for coming in, yeah, uh, you know, especially you know, 3 p.m. in the middle of the week. If anyone uh, is missing work and needs a doctor's note, I'll be happy to <laughs> sign that for you. Um, but yeah, yeah uh, thank you guys so much. I know, uh, you know I, I can look around, I can see some familiar faces, um, but, but I know there are people coming uh, you know, from sort of very different avenues, and, and it's great. So I'm going to introduce myself a little bit more and in, in sort of uh, what I'm all about and you know, what I try and offer clients uh, and you know, what hopefully you know, we can teach you guys. Because um, in the end, for me, what I'm all about uh, as a photographer is that I have no secrets at all. Nothing that I do in my business, uh, nothing that I do artistically, you know, business-wise, anything is a secret. Uh, and um, you know, it, I do that for a couple reasons. First of all, I don't, I don't like keeping secrets. It doesn't you know, feel great to me. But uh, most importantly, you know, I believe you know, I want to be in this business for the rest of my life. And uh, you know, I, I've shot uh, you know, more than a decade of photojournalism. I've done, yes, uh, 71 weddings this year, um, approaching 250 weddings uh, overall. Um, so, you know, so, so I've, I've, I've been around and I, I want to be around for, for decades and decades and I believe that if you want to create a really stable business, if you want to you know, create something um, that's going to last for a long time, then you, shouldn't, you can't base it on a secret, right? Because, unless you're Coca-Cola, because, uh, um, yeah, if you're based on a secret, if you're based on, well, I, I shoot the exact same way as the guy next to me, but I process it in a really secret way, and that's the only thing that, that differentiates me, then, then you're, you're vulnerable to somebody just coming along and saying, oh, I figured it out. I, kn I know the secret, and now I'm doing the same thing that he does. And then all you can do to, to get a job over that the person sitting next to you is to be cheaper than them. Right? So if your business isn't based on secrets, if, if you're free to share everything that you do, then you know, your business is based on, on the things that make a good business. They're based on great customer service. They're based on just working hard, improving yourself, turning on a great product. You know, and that's something that's going to last, uh, you know, for, for a long, long time. Um, as many of you, uh, you know, how many people, I, I would love to get a sense of the, of the audience, as I know this is, this is my first time uh, in this event space. I've, you know, I've spoken and lectured sort of, uh, you know, all over the, the United States and, and beyond. Um, but, so I'd love to know, like, uh, how many people here um, who here is n not interested in weddings at all? Like would would not you know doesn't either doesn't shoot weddings or and and you know and that's fine. I think some of you know ho hopefully a lot of the lessons of what we do because I'm you know a photojournalist, generalist, photographer. Um, you know if all you want to do for the rest of your life is do macros of flowers, the, you know this may not be the, the the perfect lecture for you, but you know, maybe it will be. You know, we'll, we'll try and make it work. But the, you know, the thing about weddings, which is 95% um, of my work right now and, and almost 100% of my passion, is the skills from it apply to so many different aspects of photography. And, that, and that's one of the things um, that I love about it. When I started out, uh, you know, some of you guys will remember, uh, you know, it's funny, wedding photography has kind of become cool now, which is really strange, because even like five years ago, Wedding, you know, when I was in art school, when uh, you know, even in the commercial world, wedding photography was like the, absolutely the redheaded stepchild, right? If you said, "Oh, I'm a wedding photographer," like I'm a wedding photographer, people would ask, "Well, okay, what do you really want to do, <laughs> right? Like, what kind of photography? You know, you know, any, you know anything else? You know, like uh, you're you're covering up for something." Um, and along the way, people have realized, well, "Wait, this is this, this is kind of cool." There's and. Uh, the market has transformed with it. Now there are people who are looking uh, for real stories to be told, for, you know, to take photojournalism skills, to take real portraiture skills, to take kind of the commercial skills, to take macro skills, to take uh, you know, uh, long-form documentary skills. Like, all of it can apply on the wedding day. And it's all this, this, because weddings are so many different things. And that's what I try and bring to my work, is that it's not just about two people coming forth and you know, having their whole history together and, and going forth into the next stage of their life, like that's enough for a really interesting career. But weddings are so many different things beyond that. They're also a great party. They're also um, you know, about pr parents and friends and family that have also looked forward to this day uh, you know, for their life. They're about personalities. They're about people. And for me, if something is about people, then it can be interesting if I did 365 weddings a year. Right. If I showed up every day to work, 
if the people are different, if the stories are there, I'm not going to get burned out because that's something that's constantly fresh, constantly exciting. It, you know, for me, if it's about you know, a venue, just about fabulousness, if it's about flowers, for me, that would burn me out because eventually, to me, all, all the flowers look the same. But people are different. Everyone has a story. I look around the room here, I look at you guys, and I know you've got stories. And that, to me, as a photographer, is what fascinates me, and that's why I love weddings. Now, there's kind of a flip side to that because what we're here to talk about is how to take photos when everything's kind of working against you, right? When you're in bad situations, you've got bad lighting, you've got bad backgrounds, you don't have enough time. Like, that's what weddings are all about, too, as a photographer. And you say, well, OK, you, well, you've got a pretty good career. You know, and I, sh I shoot in some, some pretty nice places. You know, I shot in the Plaza, uh, you know, Wall of Surya, you know, Four Seasons, both in Singapore and Hong Kong. I'm actually still on Hong Kong time, so uh, you know, this is much earlier for me than it is for you guys. Um, and so you say, like, well, what, you know, what do you know about you know, not shooting in, in great spots, great times, great locations? But because my career is all based around people, I'm not that photographer that only goes out and says, well, I'm only going to shoot you if you're in a fabulous spot. If somebody comes to me and says, hey, our, our total budget for the wedding is like $7,500. We want to give you, uh, you know, seven and then like, get married in the VFW hall. Like, I'm not going to do a David Tatera and be like, ugh, uh, VFW hall. Like, to me, those are my dream clients. Those are people who really appreciate what I do. And I don't normally discount, but I'd probably say, hey, here's another $500. You know, serve some liquor. You know, have, you know, have fun because I want to work with you. I want to work with people who have great stories and who appreciate me. And so I have done weddings that are in gymnasiums. And you know, I, I have done weddings you know, that are in some random backyards. And, I, and, and I've done plenty of weddings that you thought they would be fabulous. But life gets in the way. And that's the business of weddings. Um, up to and including, uh, well, we'll get to this in a sec. Uh, yeah, up to and including, I, I had a wedding this year. There was a little, little storm came into town uh, called Irene. Uh, you may have heard of it. Um, so, uh, so, so it comes along. Again, this couple had been planning their wedding. It was supposed to be the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous location. Everything should have been perfect. Great couple. You know, it should have been that, that perfect wedding, easy. It's hard to take bad photos in the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens, you know, like, easy, right? Well, Irene comes into town, this wedding they've been planning for 17 months. Uh, they have to replan it entirely in 90 minutes. Um, different venue, they end up being in the middle of a restaurant somewhere in Manhattan. You know, 80 of the guests couldn't show up. Uh, we walked to the wedding. Uh, you know, they were wearing Lululemon pants and, and you know, like a random cocktail dress instead of wedding clothes. And it's one of my favorite weddings I've ever done, right? That's what weddings are. That's what I sell to clients. I'm going to, every once in a while, you know, for people who are interested in weddings and making a business of it, I'll you know, make a note of a little asterisk for like these particular ideas can, can make you guys a lot of money. <laughs> uh, so, so here's a little asterisk. Um, especially in New York, if you let clients know and let them believe and, and are truthful with them and, and make them believe that you can, are the person that can reduce their stress, then they are very likely to book you. Um, if you're, because when people are planning a wedding, um, the, the last thing they want is vendors to add to their stress. People with bad communication, people like another thing they've got to worry about. But if you're the person who says, you know what, all this bad stuff can happen on your wedding day and you're still going to get good photos, your stress is going to go down, that's something that people are going to pay for, especially where we are in Manhattan. I mean, it was stressful enough getting across town today with Christmas traffic. Like, who wants to deal, uh, you know, if, if somebody can come along and like reduce the Manhattan night stress, that's, that's where a lot of my business comes from, is people who know, yeah, we want to have a fabulous wedding, but we also know that a lot of stuff gets in the way, and we want a photographer who's going to cover that. Now, wedding photography <laughs> is, uh, I'm going to pass it and let me bring that to the slideshow here. See, I keep it low tech, but tech always gets in the way. Um, I like to say, if com I've done commercial, I've done all sorts of you know, different styles of photography, and, and for me, nothing beats weddings because I love managing chaos, right? <laughs> I'm not, uh, you know, I've, I've had like art directors uh, come up to me and say, hey, we'd love to like pay you this amount of money to shoot a watch. And, I'm like, well, you know, I'd love the money, 
but I'm not the person to do that because that requires you know, somebody who's very anal, somebody who's very particular, who will sit with a watch all day and get the best specular highlights, and, and, and that's not me. For me, you, I, want, I want to be in the middle of like the, the most maddest, crazy situation and make some sense of it and make things right and tell a beautiful story from that because that's kind of how I live my life anyway. Um, and so if commercial photographers are like scientists in a lab, like tinkering away, trying to make things better, like you know, getting uh, you know, breakthroughs and things like that, wedding photographers, we're MacGyver. Uh, you know, we walk in, and sometimes you got like five minutes and a potato and a wristwatch, and you've got to make a bomb, right? <laughs> um, there are so many situations that you deal with, no matter how much planning you do, no matter you know, uh, you know, if you are somebody that tries to schedule everything in advance. Um, there's so many times where you've got clients, you know, and they, they hate being in front of the camera. There's, I mean, 98% of the public would rather be somewhere else than in front of a camera. And I don't work with models. I, I work with just normal people. And so many of them, so there's sort of on the scale of like, would rather be somewhere else in front of a camera to like sociopathic, like pathological, cannot be photographed. And I love working with those people. Uh, I have fun with them because I know that those are the people that have never had, have never liked any other photographs of them before. Um, if I work with a model and I take a great photograph of them, then they're like, oh, oh, wonderful, another great photograph. I'll add it to my giant pile of great photographs. Um, but if I work with somebody who, who hates themselves, or, you know, and everyone, like, I think, like, their self-image is based on, you know, like, who you were when you were 13, right? And so, so I don't want the photographer who thinks that everyone is a beautiful flower. I want the photographer who knows what I hated about myself when I was 13. You know, the, the lanky kid and, you know, still got the big nose and the ears and, the, you know. I want, and then, you know, can kind of say, like, okay, I'm going to put you in the best light and we're going to make you comfortable. And then I'm going to create photos for you that maybe will be the first photos for you you've ever liked, right? And that, again, that's value. You can do that for people. They're going to hire you. They're going to give you money. That's another uh, asterisk point. Um, so, so we're we're MacGyver. That's it. That's a, these are the things we have to learn. This is the this is the uh, skill set. Uh, but I can't do everything uh, that MacGyver does. I, I I really I can't pull off the mullet. Um, but everything you know that we're going to go over that we're going to talk about uh, today is things that are you know they're really current now. Uh, you know, you know, there are some photographers who you know, lecture more than shoot, uh, and, and in fact, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, they'll be a way better lecturer than I am. Um, you'll, you're going to see from my style today, and you've probably already noticed, uh, you know, I'm going to jump around a little bit. Your, your notebook may look uh, like a little bit interesting. and have to draw some arrows back to where you know, everything connected. All the information will get out you know, eventually. It's, it's, if anyone watches, has seen Eddie Izzard, um, it's sort of the, the style of rambling. Um, and things draw back into each other. And you're like, wait. That I heard of that 40 minutes ago. OK, OK, we can draw that connection. Um, usually when I have a client meeting, what they'll do is they'll ask me one question, and I'll spend the next 20 or 30 minutes answering it. And then I'll say, do you have any other questions? And they're like, no, you've answered every possible question I could ever have. OK, and, and, and then they book me, because they have nothing else to say. So, um, so it, does, it does tend to work in the end. But because what I am, and what this is, 140, is a rough amount of the professional shoots I've done this year. I think it's actually a little bit low, because I've done 71 full weddings. Then you've got the engagement shoots, you've got portrait shoots, you've got the commercial work uh, that I still do. So really, it's, it's darn near 150 uh, 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 professional shoots, again, uh, around the world. Um, you know, as far, far away as, as Hong Kong this year, Singapore last year. Um, so everything that I'm doing is based on these are ideas that clients have actually bought right? recently. Like I'm out there in the field. I'm out there working. I'm out there, you know, all, all the things, all the ideas that I have you know, are things that I've learned you know, uh, and, and still perfecting you know, even now. Uh, I'm there, and, and this works. Right, you know, it, it works for me. It, it works for clients, and I'm there with you. I'm I'm out in the field. I shoot more than a quarter million photos every year. Um, so, if you want to see what that does to a camera, uh, this is the D3S. This is like invul I could throw this against the wall, and the wall is going to be hurt more than the camera. But as you can see, it kind of looks like Frankenstein uh, because. 
I've put it through a lot, a lot of torture. And that's a D3S. So you should see my old D3s. Um, S or X? Uh, that's the S. That's the S. I, again, you know, as a wedding photographer, uh, I love the, the ISO quality, um, you know, that, that, that those kind of cameras, whether it's the S or the 5D, you know, the, if I were Canon right now, I'd be going crazy over the 1DX. I'd have two of them pre-ordered um, because I love, I love specialized, I love the digital. The, what I love about that is that it shows us that there's a world of color out there in the darkness that we didn't even know, you know, as we'd been like, you know, film photographers for years or, or even beyond with our eyes. You know, uh, it's very, very easy uh, these days for these kind of cameras to take photos that are brighter, more col colorful, more realistic in dark situations than our eyes can see, which is, yeah, mind blowing. Um, but so what's the, like, what makes wedding photography so hard, <laughs> right? Um, why, why aren't most wedding photos, you know, as good as most magazine photos? I mean, you know, um, why, like, why do we, why do, you know, good wedding photographers get paid a lot? Why, you know, what, what, what's it all about? Um, for me, it's that, again, if you want to make a really, really excellent photo, there's a few different ways to get there. Now, first, you can be lucky. And a lot of photography, you know, which we'll, we'll go over in a second, is just being prepared to be lucky. Think of maybe the most famous photograph that's ever been taken. Uh, uh, Joe, Joe Rosenthal uh, taken you know, the, the, the flag at Iwo Jima. Um, I mean, I don't, even, I don't even have to tell you. I don't even have to have a picture of it, because everyone knows you know, that the sailors raising the flag on Mount Suribachi in, in Iwo Jima. Um, it was kind of lucky, right? He was actually kind of like tripping and falling and like, you know, hoping and didn't even know. Um, but man, he had prepared, he prepared to be lucky. He was there. Um, you know, he'd spent years and years getting to that point. And he, he was also, he was there as a photographer, but he'd also done the work to get there. Um, so a lot of photography to make a, a great photo almost always takes luck, right? Because if it, if it didn't take luck, if there was no luck involved, then it would be just, just a really good photo. But then there's something else, something that gets beyond all the millions and millions of photos that are taken every day, that when everything just clicks, that's luck. If it wasn't luck, if it happened every time, it wouldn't be great. I mean, you know, my definition of great is something that you can't just do like that all the time. Like, I'm not snapping my fingers so great because I can always do it, and it's not so great. Um, but. And then the other thing you know, that's kind of tied up in that is that you're not always going to be lucky. So you've got to be able to embrace failure. If you've ever looked at, like, say, uh, I don't know, Bresson's full rolls or like full rolls from you know, famous photographers, um, they've taken a lot of terrible photos. Uh, you know, street photographers, documentary photographers, um, National Geographic photographers, they'll, they'll, they, you know, they would go out with like 800 rolls, right, for like five great ones. Um, you know, I heard like uh, National Geographic editors, William Allard, famous National Geographic photographer, he'd send in these roles and the editors would say, would spend like, look through them, look through the roles, and the roles would be like, what is he smoking? These are terrible. What is, and then, then it like clicks and they figure out, this is, oh, this is what he was doing. This is amazing. And so, so but the other thing, you have to embrace failure. You know, uh, if you want to create a great image, and, and these are, we're talking about not just good photos. Right now, we're talking about like photo, you want to make the photo of your lifetime. We're talking about like of, uh, of photos that everyone will remember, photos that will change the world. These are the ways to get there. And a lot of times, you've got to fail, 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 fail until you get there. And then the third thing, if you don't want to deal with luck, <laughs> if you don't want to deal with embracing failure, is being like Annie Leibovitz, is being like insanely uh, obsessive, you know, uh, creative over every, every last detail for weeks and weeks and weeks and months and months and months, doing like Annie Leibovitz and the Disney campaign, putting things together, like you've, you know, just to make sure that every last pixel is like as perfect as it can be. Now, what are some things that wedding photographers can't ever do? <laughs> oh, the same things. We can't, as he, said, as he said, you can't hope to be lucky because you know, then what happens when you go up to clients and say, sorry, I wasn't lucky. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I tried, you know, um, it didn't work out, your photos are okay. 
um, you can't fail, 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 fail uh, on the wedding day because, you can, again, you can't go up to people and say, oh, I tried this. It was outside the boundaries. And it, it could have been really cool. But you, know, you don't have ceremony photos. Is that OK? Um, yeah. So you can't do that. And you can't have obsessive minute control over every detail. If you're not ready to uh, embrace chaos a little bit, wedding photography may not be the best field for you. Um, and you know, if, you know, again, some people have you know, more control than others. Some people will, you know, will say, OK, we've got to shoot at this time. We've got to shoot at this place. I, have, I offer no control to clients. I'm like, you do what you want. I'm there. I'll give you suggestions because I've done you know, almost 250 of these, and, and I can make your life less stressful. But the wedding day isn't about me. Now, some photographers are a little bit different, but basically, I don't know any photographers who would be like the bride would show up in a dress and they'd be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Come back with another dress. <laughs> right? You, know, you, you do not have as much control uh, as you would like to. So, all of these things that are sort of the traditional paths for making amazing photos, those are exactly things that we can't do. So, like, so what can we do? Well, sometimes everything just works. Sometimes you know, life kind of helps you out. <laughs> um, and again, a little bit of luck. There was a little bit of luck. I'm sorry. Um, but I was prepared. I knew, what I, you know, I knew what I was going for. I knew what I was uh, hoping, and I wanted that. Um, you know, and then but, you know, the, that was the first try. That I, 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 everything came together, their expression, you know, uh, the cabs, everything, the fact that I was even managing to get a sharp shot at 1 15th of a second and an 85 millimeter. Um, you know, that's a little, a little bit of luck there. It, came, you know, it all came together. One, one foot to the left, and, and there's no heads. There's just a, you know, a taxi cab. So what I do, I'll, I'll get you a question in one second. What I do is you know, I educate clients. I work with them, and I say, hey, most of the wedding day, I'm going to do it as safe as possible. And now what's safe for me may not, is maybe a little bit beyond what's safe for some other people, because I'm, I'm always there working. Um, but you know, can we take 10 minutes? Can we take 15 minutes to do something that right. might be terrible? right? Because I want to push myself beyond my envelope. And that way, I keep expanding where my envelope is. And a lot of things that are safe shots for me now used to be like push the envelope kind of shots. But I want to do things, if, if I want to keep myself interested, if I want to you know, uh, get the kind of shots that aren't just safe, if, if I educate them beforehand and say, like, hey, give me 10 minutes, this might suck. Um, but it might be amazing, because we're, we're going beyond what we can normally do. Um, can that work? And now that those 10 minutes will not be the first kiss of the ceremony. They won't be the first dance, um, you know, unless I'm with the second shooter or something like that. But I'm giving you that opportunity to say, around the edges, even though this is a wedding day, even though these memories are forever, where can I push myself? Where can I? Um, you know, have the opportunity for truly great photos. And so, so usually, though, things don't work out. <laughs> and you've got to turn that to your advantage. Um, and again, you be ready for them. And you t you, if you can take things that could have ruined your day and then make them something spectacular, that's something that's going to make you stand out as a photographer. Now here's another like little bullet point idea. Like again, this is going to get me clients. It's going to make me money. Um, if you take a happy client and you keep them happy, and you take good photos for you, and they're happy and they're happy and everything's happy, like they're going to really like you, and they'll probably recommend them to uh, recommend you to other people. But if you take a client that started out miserable because of the things that were going on on their day or the things that were happening whether it's weather, whether it's timing, whether it's just stress out from their families, uh, you know, people are on their back, like whatever, and they're miserable, and you can make them happy, like they're going to name your, their kids after you. <laughs> right? Like if you take a, a wedding that's off track and you put it back on track, if you, you know, take weather that's terrible and you make great photos out of it, um, then, then you, those are going to be the clients that you want, your evangelist clients, who will say, like, whenever their friends get engaged, they'll say, OK, I don't care who you hire for your florist. You can pick whatever venue you want. They're great. But like, you have to hire Ryan, or I'll fight you, <laughs> right? Because he saved my wedding day. Um, so, so here, this is a case. This is actually just an engagement shoot. But I was ready, because I, I said, you know, I am obsessive about the weather. <laughs> and I said, look, 
if we do this engagement shoot, there's weather coming, and it's it's gonna it's gonna come. It, you know, um, we started. And they're like, no, 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 let's start it. So we started the shoot, and then like the weather turned green, uh, and yeah, you know, and the rain came down. This is actually ended up being a worse storm than the hurricane in, in New York City. Um, but I said, okay. As soon as it came, I was like, look, let's let's go, let's do this. Um, let's, you know, you know, we'll put the light uh, from behind. We actually went back to my studio so that they could pop in and out and not have to spend too much time in the rain. And um, people ask me on this in the next shot that I'm going to show, how do you protect your lights? The answer is, uh, I, d I didn't. I didn't have time. I'm wor you know, working real fast. So I had about three minutes before the flash shorted out. You know, but to me, uh, it's worth it. Uh, same thing here, actually. Um, my assistant, the hidden, the hidden member uh, of this shot is in the room here. I just, just saw him walk in. Um, now, here's the exact situation. Uh, this is a wedding day, and this wasn't planned. We weren't thinking about, oh, it's going to rain, and we're going to do this, and it's going to be so perfect. No, this was a terrible situation. This was uh, Central Park Boathouse. Again, amazing, beautiful bride, be a great couple. Should have been perfect. They're about to walk in to the reception. And it's then you have to actually walk through Central Park to get there. It's the one downfall. Should be a beautiful, nice little stroll. But all of the guests are there, and the sky is open. Now, so here's the bride, and she's thinking about her grandmother. She's thinking about her parents. She's thinking about everyone who now has to like walk in the pouring, pouring rain just to get to the reception. Like her, she's devastated. She's absolutely devastated. And then she's got to walk you know, in, in this fabulous dress. And so you know, I'm sitting there with her. And beyond the photo, it's also about what you can get your clients toward. And I said, look, this sucks. It's a bad situation. I know. I'm sorry that you have to deal with this. Let's make lemonade out of the lemons. At least I know I can get you a, a great photo out of this. And so that took her mind away from all these things that you know, were being resolved in the background. And, and we did. We, you know, we walked out. You know, I, did, I said, you know, I've already seen. Um, again, I want to push you to the next step. I want to do something that's a little hard. I want to make something that might suck, <laughs> even though I'm in a, 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 you know, a high risk situation here. And I said, well, you know, we can do the back live with the rain. I'm also going to like, uh, put in a tilt shift, even though, of course, it's darkness and you know, hard to focus. Um, you know, I'm going to get the tilt shift so that the, the, the rain also becomes these kind of interesting you know, bokeh lights that we see here. And this is one of those situations where you show them the photo, and then like everything's better. right? So she actually, yes? What do you use to protect your equipment? Again, in this situation, nothing. <laughs> and so the flash did short out. You know, they're fine again. You know, it's not salt water. You just, uh, you know, they dry off and, and, and they work again. Because I didn't, I had no plan. I, I didn't plan for this. So I could have like, you know, said I could have said, oh, we can't do it. You know, I'm going to put my equipment. I don't want to put my equipment at risk, and I wouldn't have gotten this photo. And I and and she would have sat there stewing in her own juices. Or I, or I could say I can take that risk, and I can say. Look, I've got to go. I've got to go for that shot. Um, oh, uh, sorry, he's recording. Not questioning. Here. You mentioned using a tilt shift. Could you describe mm -hmm. what that does and how it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, this is. I don't want to get too off, off the track here, but you know, basically tilt shift. It's, it's in this case, um, it's just working like selective focus. Basically, what all the tilt shift lens is is it lets you. It's, it's like. If you're shooting with large format or something, anything with camera movements, generally everything we do, our focal plane is, he, is a plane. If you've got a really bad lens, maybe it's a little bit curved, right? Um, uh, but it's generally, you know, here's your focal plane. It's, if that ceiling is in focus, then the floor is in focus right under it, no matter if I've got an f0.0.0.2 lens. Like, that's where, the, that's where the, the focal plane is. Now, this just lets me say, I'll put the focal plane wherever I want. So maybe I want you in focus and his head in focus, but like this stuff out of focus. So, so it's kind of, it's, um, you can use it either simply like this just to create things that are out of focus, um, or you can use it to, to have, uh, which is sometimes even more interesting, to have certain things in focus. Um, so I have like a situation where maybe the bride really loves her shoes. 
loved her shoes, like almost more than her husband. Um, and so I can have the bride in the background, or like a portrait in the background, and like those, those Louboutins in the foreground also in focus without being like F45. Um, so so th that's what it does. Now they're manual focus, they're hard to focus, they're you know, things like that. So again, this is a situation and it's dark um, where I'm saying I'm taking it to the next level, I'm doing something that's harder uh, than, it, than it needed to be just because then I can get a result that might be something special. And this is, this is the overarching metaphor of everything that we do here. Some of the things that we're going to be learning, they're a little bit hard. And that's on purpose. Um, and I'm going to take you through everything that, yeah, that we need to do them. But they're not simple. And the reason is that if they're hard, not everyone's going to do them. So I can very quickly, you know, here's five seconds how to take a decent por portrait. Take your camera. To, you know, take a DSLR, take like a 50 millimeter f1.4 lens, bring somebody out, bring them to a field, get above them, they look up, focus on the nearest eye, get them smiling a little bit, take the photo, wide open, decent portrait. Now, w one second. Now, who, like, who can do that here? Everyone. Everyone can do that, right? And so if that's what you, if that's what you specialize in, if that's like, this is what I do, I take them out to a field and I shoot them above, 50 millimeter f1.4 lens. Um, the person, person sitting next to you can do that too. <laughs> so why would they hire you over them? You know, either you have better customer service, better personality, or you're cheaper, right? And so if what you're doing is something that everyone else does or something everyone else can figure out really easily, um, then all you can do is compete on price uh, or, or, your, or personality. Um, so if we do things, and whatever it is, I want you to take these things and run them into different directions. But if you do things, if you work on certain angles, and you know the person next to you can't do them, then you're going to be somebody that people are going to want to hire, even if you're the more expensive than your competitors. Um, what was the lighting set out for your shot? This was, so it was very simple. This was uh, Brendan, who's back there, uh, was just holding an SB900 right from behind them. And because they're holding an, you know, an umbrella, it kind of uh, wraps around, uh, and because she's wearing a white dress, white dresses are, are reflectors. So it's just it's one light, and the dress is, a, and the dress and a little bit of the umbrella is a reflector. Uh, let's see what, how we are from time. Okay, so this is a constant, constant scenario uh, in weddings in, in anything. You know, unless again you're um, a very particular kind of commercial photographer, because even. Um, even most commercial photographers, everyone deals with not having enough time. Um, so the first thing I can say to you is get fast. <laughs> right? Now, I know that's, that's like um, you know, the old Steve Martin routine when he says, like, you know, how to become a millionaire and not pay taxes. First, get a million dollars. <laughs> um, you're like, thanks. That's really helpful. Um, but there are certain lessons that, that you cannot like, learn and walk out of here <coughs> And know innately, you know, because you've listened to a two-hour lecture uh, in B and H space. Um, I can give you some new ideas and can kind of put you on the path. But to be successful in photography, to be successful in in almost anything, uh, takes work. Takes you know, everything we do, every you know, any idea you get when you say, oh, "I want to try this," the, the the undercurrent should be like, "I want to try this ten thousand times." <laughs> um, and you know, get a little bit faster. And know, like a lot of my commercial work um, that I get when I get is something you get hired back for. That's the difference with weddings. Hopefully, usually, you know, you, the client's only hiring you one time for weddings, um, you know, unless you're shooting Liz Taylor's wedding or something. I don't know. Um, but when you're doing commercial work, I get hired back a lot. That's that's where it comes in. And the reason I get hired back is a they like my work, but b I'm doing it three times faster than their other photographers. Um, because you know, know your gear, know it innately. Know like you know, you know, um, don't have to look at it. Don't, you know, uh, if you don't have things right the first time, which is fine, which is good. Like just you know, have the skills that you can move it and make it right the second time. Um, and it's a really, really valuable skill to learn. Again, the things that you can set up beforehand do. So, for example, one of my ways which I Take unhappy brides and make them happy. To take is to take their you know their wedding day schedules and, and bring them back on by saying like, okay, you've given me a list of 45 family groups, right? And and you know that should take a massive amount of time, but 
I've talked to you beforehand, everyone who's in them, they know what's happening, they know where it's going to happen, they know when it's going to happen, they know not to go to the bar, um, and then I've got the lighting, I've got the scenario, I've got it set up so that it becomes very, 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 very fast without being rushed. It's just you know, learning to be in command of the situation. And that's something, even with a decade of photojournalism experience, when I walked into weddings, that's something I wasn't very good at. That's something that took 250 weddings to get good at. Because there's, you know, it's the, it's the 10,000 hour principle. It's the, you, won't, you, know, you become an expert at something after doing 10,000 hours of it. Now, there's the, the photography expertise aspect of it, but there's something else. And what, the reason I take so many weddings, the reason I do so many, is that you can become an expert at weddings, too, at the flow, at the give and take of them. And sometimes, it, you know, and I'm a, kind of a lone voice in the wilderness for this. The way to do that is to maybe not have your prices as high as you, as you, think, as you think that you're worth. Um, again, my, my prices are as low as I can make them. Um, they're totally based on supply and demand. Um, you know, the, again, you know, I do, and I give a lot of supply because I do you know, 70, 71 weddings a year. Now, that's not low. It's, to me, it's still crazy what people are paying. Um, but I want to be out there. I want to be in the field learning and doing more and, and you know, getting beyond this. Um, and that's what makes you fast. Now, terrible, terrible, terrible locations <laughs> um, is something that all of us have to deal with. And this is the thing. Most weddings don't happen in the four seasons, right? You know, statistically, you know, a, a thousand, ten thousand times more weddings happen in VFW halls. Uh, you know, most or you know, happen in like um, what I call, you know, the New Jersey special. You know, I deal with a lot where you know, in New Jersey, um, no matter how fabulous the venue, wh whether it's tiny, you know, and, and inexpensive, or like the most fabulous venue ever. The outside is always parking lot highway, <laughs> parking lot highway, and you know, and, and, and that's it, and that's what you deal with, and, and so if for whatever reason you can't use the interior, you have to learn how to take really great photos in a parking lot. Um, now, the wonderful, or a bus. <laughs> So here's the situation, recent again, should have been an amazing wedding. She got the Vera Wang dress, you know, fabulous uh, you know, scenario. We're going to go out to a park. She's a great looking couple. Everything should be perfect. But we show up in the party bus, of course, hair and makeup, an hour late, like always. Um, and they, uh, so they're in a party bus, and they're in front of their church. So I'm like, OK, Parking lot, let's shoot in a parking lot. I can do it. Uh, we thought we were going to go to a park. We don't have the time. Let's do a parking lot. No, no, no. We can't do the parking lot because there are guests outside. Um, and they're going to you know, see me in the dress. OK, we're going to have to do the shoot in the bus. <laughs> um, so you take you know, the fantastic clients. You know, all, you know, this is just uh, you know, part, and it's cropped. And, and so you know, do what I can. Use the you know, wide angle lens to kind of create the leading lines, you know, uh, backlight. And then you know, just focus in on them. The, the beautiful thing about photography, why it's a great liar, is that anything that's outside the frame doesn't exist. So only your frame matters. Um, and and that, can make, that, that can make photography the best liar in the world. Um, Say again. Pardon? Say again. Anything outside the frame doesn't exist. And that's something that I explain to my clients, because they'll be like, why are you bringing us into a construction zone? Or like, we're at this fabulous place, and they, you know, and, and they know to trust me, but they're like, well, isn't it really prettier over there? Um, well, <laughs> yes and no. I mean, because what matters is, you know, if you're um, the less the less pretty I am, you know, uh, that my location is, the longer my average focal length, <laughs> right? Because if, if, if I'm just shooting a couple, two people, I only need five feet of nice looking space. And sometimes what you can do is you can also time shift. You can say, we've got a really bad location now. Let, let's, uh, let's, let's take you guys out later. Five minutes, and we'll take you guys out later. Be really romantic. You know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do this. And then we'll, we'll bring you guys out, and, and we'll, we'll step it up a bit. So, Everyone here has dealt with bad light, right? And this is something that you deal with constantly in the wedding days because you're dealing with people, you know, despite your best intentions, who are, and, and the, the help and advice you give them, 
who are planning their wedding, even though, of course, it's the first time they plan a wedding, and, and they, you know, they may not know so much about photography. So I get this a lot where, where people will say, well, we want the best light, and, and that means the most light. <laughs> um, so, so we schedule our portraits for noon. Um, and I've actually have done you know, uh, noon portraits on the summer solstice, uh, <laughs> uh, which is something. I've got noon portraits tomorrow, um, and that's not so bad in December, but you know, summer solstice. And of course, those are the times when there's not a cloud in the sky. And you look out, and there's, you know, everyone's got raccoon eyes. Um, and, you know, and so bad light could be that, or bad light could be not enough light. Uh, bad light, you know, like, um, yeah, when you're, when you're dealing with bad light, your first question is, can I turn it off? Videographers hate me sometimes, because uh, if I'm doing indoor portraits, I'll turn off lights like crazy. You know, if, if you're in those situations where you've got, like, recessed tungsten lights here and fluorescent lights here, I mean, the first thing, anytime you see a fluorescent light, is, OK, where's the switch? Um, you know, where's the off switch? Because then you have control. Then you know, uh, you're dealing with mixed lights that are, that are maybe a little bit better. And then um, yeah, you can make it work. Um, for example, in hotel rooms. Now, we're always starting, you know, if you're doing a wedding day, I wish uh, there was ever a situation that I did a hotel room at night. Um, you know, maybe if I start shooting weddings in Alaska or something uh, where, where it's dark in the hotel room. It's always very bright. There's always a lot of sunlight. And sometimes that works. Uh, and, you know, but sometimes I can't really create things that are effectively dramatic. So I say, hey, is everyone done? Would, everyone ma would it matter to anyone if it's going to get really dark in here? And I start switching off lights. I start shutting curtains. And I want to create control for myself. You know, so here's a situation. Um, you know, I'm creating a really interesting light in what had been you know, a very, uh, and it's not coming off great on the screen here. Um, has, let me, uh, here's one that's coming off better. Um, so, so here's the situation we're talking about, you know, sort of semi-short lighting, side lighting. And it's really, really taking weight off. Because you know, this is somebody, that, she's actually one of my best friends. Um, you know, she's plus size, whatever, you know, whatever the word uh, you know, for it is. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Obviously, there's a photo of her. Um, but you know, she's, not, she's not a size zero. Um, so, so what I'm doing is I'm only lighting half of her. And you know, the ultimate, um, I guess, sort of note of appreciation for a photographer is how long someone keeps a photo as their Facebook profile <laughs> photo, right? Like, I think this is like two years later. I think it's still their Facebook profile <laughs> photo, right? Um, and, and so what I had done here, this, this was actually in the venue, very similar to hotel, is to take you know, these giant, giant curtains and close them to just a, like a fraction of an inch, right? So that the light that's coming through is just like a little, little strip light. And then I, I also have a lot of control over it, because I can make you know, the, the difference come a little bit larger, a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger. And it's also then it's not lighting the background. It's not just, oh, there's sunlight, and it's kind of everywhere. Because you know, curtain light, I mean, it's, there's nothing. <laughs> I think no one's shocked you know, by the idea that like, you know, taking somebody up to a window, if there's diffuse light, um, you know, you know, might not be a bad idea uh, sometimes. But if you want to take that beyond, and you want to make that interesting, is to then have control over that light by seeing you know, if you have curtains, you know, like close them so that, so that then you can play with exactly you know, how much light is on them. And then all of a sudden, you've got a really interesting studio light display instead of just bright against glass, which is, you know, normal. So yeah, so most of the time, the really bad light we're dealing with is the sun. Um, you can't turn it off. Um, and please don't. We need it. Um, but you got to learn how to deal with it. And so the first thing is, is to kill it. Like, overcome it. This, you know, this little thing right here, Way stronger than the sun, right? Well, maybe not, but it can be because it's way closer than the sun. What happens? What, there's a, there's a few things that happen uh, when this is this is a, it'll keep you guys awake. There's a few things that happen when a light source gets closer to you. Um, what happens? Ah, you got, you, got, you got two of them. You got the two most important ones. Um, so it gets brighter, of course, uh, because. Faster follow up. So that's OK, right? 
Now what if I do this? Yeah, it's like, it's like don't do that, please. Um, what, what happens is um, you know, all of a sudden, these little speed lights, you don't want that going off in your eyes. Because um, this is where all you need to know about light in ter is a couple nerdy things that will serve their, you know, and this is where it gets real nerdy, real mathy. Um, but it's not about that. It's about what they can do for you. And the, the main thing is the inverse square law. Mm, very exciting. Basically, what it, what it, all that means is that light gets really strong as it gets closer. So the, the inverse square is that if I'm, getting, if I'm here and then I get half as far away, I'm not getting twice as powerful. I'm getting four times as powerful. I'm, I'm squaring it. And it, you know, if, I'm, if I'm a third as, as close, uh, I'm getting nine times as powerful. So basically, even a little, little light can become really, really powerful if it's really close to the subject. Um, now, the second thing is that it becomes softer. And what, you know, what that means, you know, just covers, you know, we know soft, you know, cloudy day, soft, soft box, soft light versus like little light bulb, hard light, um, you know, these light panels. Um, they've, the reason that they've spent the money on these one foot light panels instead of a little tiny light, uh, these recessed lights, is that it's softer, it's, it's more flattering. Um, but the only thing that, that matters isn't the actual size of the object, it's the apparent size. And what that means is, like the sun is really big, really big. If the actual size of the object mattered, sunlight should be the softest light possible because it's huge. But it's really far away. It just so to your eye, it just looks this big. Whereas something like this isn't so big. If I'm from here, you know, it looks on um, Casey. It looks it looks really uh, small. From here, it's 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 not going to be much different than a normal flash. But if if I walk through and I'm here. Um, you know, all of a sudden, this actually is the light that is used in this photo um, on, on the bride. And it, it's, it's soft, it's nice, it, it, it falls on her. Now, who said, who said the last one? Who said faster fall off? Oh, OK. Hey, have, you been, have you been to one of my lectures? Oh, wow, OK, good. He's we got a ringer here. Um, so, so what happens, this is also another part of the inverse square law, is that sun, sunlight, for example, hits everything with the same intensity because everything is about the same distance from the sun. Right? Like, if I go up a mountain, I'm still like, the sun doesn't care. It's like you're, you're really far away, one way or the other. Um, but if I'm here, not only is it important that the light is stronger, but like the, the front of his face is much closer to the light than, you know, the, than like his shoulder. Right? So that creates something, that creates fall off. And you can see that here in this photo. Because again, I want to create photos that are really flattering to people. And now, you know, one of the things I'm doing that that's, wouldn't normally be the most favorable uh, to somebody, which is to stick them at the edge of a 24 millimeter frame. Um, so we've got a beautiful bride, but yeah, she, it, it could make her look a little bit, little bit heavier. However, I'm only lighting like a third of her. Right? You can see, I'm, like, I'm not just, boom, umbrella down, like, you know, you know, from 10 feet away, lighting that whole arm. Uh, you know, I'm creating a line in the arm. You know, that's the fall off. I'm creating a line in the face, showing that cheekbone. And so what did I do to create this is the important thing here is that the light, which is just, just one of these with a soft box, is one inch outside the frame. And that's because when I walked in, I had a huge problem. You couldn't stare at this scene. You couldn't look here without blinding yourself. Yeah. This is F22 light. This is or F or F32. It, this is Chelsea Piers. You got the sun coming in, and it's coming off the water. It's a bright day, June 14th, 2009. That's a good memory. Um, and I, I, I was like, yeah. So I'm using it. What I'm doing here is I'm, I'm using it, and um, I'm closing that down, and I'm saying, well, OK, I, can, you know, I can't light all of you. So you guys, I want you to, to make interesting shapes. Charlie's Angels, you know, whatever you want. <laughs> this, you are silhouettes. And silhouettes is all about body language. So, you know, so turn, so, so be interesting. And here, it's all about her. And so even though I'm, I'm, this is like not just sun, but sun amplified by water, um, and I've got a softbox on a single flash, because it is one foot away from her, 
No problem. I wasn't even at full power. Um, so, and it's got the it's got the fall off. It's got the character to the light. So that's the easiest way to kill the sun is to just have that flash as close as possible to the outside of the frame. Maybe stick your subjects to the edge of the frame. That's even easier if it's a telephoto frame, so you're not going to have that distortion. Um, you know, it's very, very easy to um, you know, maybe have a, uh, a telephoto shot in 85, 70 to 200 or something. Then you can have that light real close to them. And then you can, if you guys use auto FP mode, um, this actually was an auto FP. So it's not F22. It's just 1 8,000th of a second. Um, and so, so which makes the flash even weaker. <laughs> and I can still, still pull it off. Does everyone know, they would not, not know what auto FP is or high speed sync. Basically, it's wonderful, wonderful technology that just lets your, <laughs> it let, kind of turns your flash into a video light so that it can work at any shutter speed, but it becomes much less powerful. So that's when you've really got to get it in close um, so, that it, so that it works uh, and can still overcome the sun. Um, so another situation. F22 light, I'm uh, you know, bringing in close. They're hiding you know, just right behind, uh, you know, uh, right behind this wall here. Uh, so they're as, they're as close as they can be. You know, we're getting interesting light. We're still getting the sun. And something that, that could have been not so interesting is seeing, you know, we're, we're pulling it out. We're using those shadows. Um, and here, so you can even make the lights part of the scene. <laughs> um, so here, you know, really fun couple. You know, we, want, we want to pull out and like, they're like, they, they want to get a shot in front of Shoot the Freak. I'm like, OK. Yeah, we can just do it. We can just kind of like, hey, you're here. And we, we got photos of them, actually. This is at Coney Island, like having fun with it. And then I'm like, look, let's, let's make something that's, that's kind of fun, kind of different. So, so they're shooting each other. They're actually lighting each other. Uh, and you can see those lights are close, because you can see them in the frame. And you know, those, you know, no, no Photoshop here. So those are the lights that, that are actually lighting each other, again, very bright day, Coney Island, uh, you know, middle midday, uh, you know, midday shoot, and they're and they're having fun with it. So this one, you can, in addition to being a fun photo, you can see what it means and how it works. Uh, you know, that when the lights are in close, and that yes, it, it really is only one speed light that can overcome noon on a uh, you know on a sunny day, as long as you've got uh, as long as it's close. Um, but I have a question. yes. I'm sure you. Uh, this light is also on? Yes. Yeah, it's just not, it's not facing the, you can see it a little bit. It's not facing the camera, so it's not flaring. But you can really see it because his light is lighting her. Um, yep, it's all natural. Yeah, so, so that was a, it was a small aperture, which is why everything's in focus and, and why there's kind of that star effect. Yeah, I don't, um, I'll point out, and uh, again, Mostly, because, you know, I come from a photojournalism background, but also mostly because I shoot a quarter million photos a year. I really, really don't do Photoshop in my photos unless I have to, unless I have a very good reason. And so we're about to get to a really good reason to use Photoshop on your photos. Some, there is some times where Photoshop really helps. And that's when, so you're saying, OK, OK, good. Um, I want the flash to be really close to my subject. You know, if I want that that um, that option, if I want to overcome the sun, but you know, I'd kind of not. I don't want all my photos to have somebody standing at the edge of the frame. You know, um, I kind of want to frame my photos in the way that I want to do it, and, and have a 24 millimeter frame and lots of environment, and have somebody in the middle of it, and and still overcome the sun. Well, is there a way to do that? Well, of course, of course, it's a very very simple way, which is. <laughs> Just use Photoshop. Um, this is you know, something I call I I call it flash composites because I don't know if there's a real word for it, but this is not new. This is not um, yeah. You know, there's not anything uh, special here. This is the oldest commercial photography itself. But the simple, most ba basic purpose of it is to just get equipment out of the shot. So they've been doing that you know, again since for you know, for 70 years. But it's you know, I have this situation, Jersey Special. All we got is a parking lot, right? Uh, and we got a you know, real sunny day, and I want to make them look like superheroes. So I want to get that close fall off. Um, I want to, you know, I want to, I've got a speed lights. I want to overcome that sun. But, you know, I, I want to be like this. I want him in the middle of the frame, a 24 four millimeter frame. Um, and I want to do something complicated with the light. So this is actually three photos. I knew they kind of you know, would be into something epic. And they're like, hey, 
we've got a parking lot. You guys want to kind of look like superheroes, you know? Because, um, you know, guys, guys are kind of easy. Some, some people don't like shooting guys. For me, guys just want to look cool, right? And for some guys, that's going to mean, like, superhero cool. Other guys, that's going to mean James Bond cool. Here, I, I knew, you know, they're kind of nerdy. They, like, were Skyping via iPhone, the bride and the groom. So I'm like, OK, I can, I can bring out that, that commercial photography uh, technique and, and, and turn this, this parking lot into something, um, yeah, into, into something kind of kind of epic. First of all, the important thing is that I'm underexposing like crazy, so you're not really paying attention to the fact that it's a parking lot. No, I'm not photoshopping out all the cars uh, or the you know the cement and putting them in a pretty field or something. Um, I'm just underexposing that by like three stops. So that's not what you're thinking about. You're thinking about the fact that they've got this you know this you know, epic light on them and they're and they're posing. Now, why am I, the reason I'm below here, and again, this, you know, th this is a no Photoshop, and, you know, I could have Photoshopped out the car or something. The reason I'm below is, again, what's behind them is a parking lot. And so I didn't even Photoshop out the car just to kind of like prove that if I'm not talking about the car, you're not really seeing it as much. As if I, if I just shot them <laughs> standing there in a parking lot, and especially if I've been standing up, you'd be like, oh, great, dude's in a parking lot. Um, but by, you know, by getting low, that that's if I'm like okay, you guys want to you guys want to look epic because that's that's just the that's just the framing of it. So I'll get down, but I'll tell them, don't look at don't look at me here, you know, because that's you know, in the double chin town and, and and looking strange. I'm like you know look over my head, give them, I'll give them a point, you know look, you know look off, look awesome, right? And so so for those kind of situations, I am off you know usually below. Here's one where I'm. Um, where, where, yeah, where I'm up, I'm, I'm more at their level. Now, this is a shot. Um, this has booked me a lot of weddings. This is, I think this is the kind of thing that clients, people like wanting to look uh, like who I'm going to book for, for my wedding and, and when they're planning a wedding, something about this photo, boom, clicks for them. Um, because we're solving problems here. First of all, another rainy day. These guys are in from Canada. They want to go to Central Park. Weather is terrible. Yeah, so we have 30 seconds here you know, uh, in the park. We're, you know, we're trying to make it work. We're trying to make something special. But the real problem we're trying to solve is, you know, is again, first of all, like, most photographers don't show group shots very often in their portfolio because they don't like group shots. <laughs> but like, group shots are really important. You know, these are people that, that you know, they've flown in from Canada. These are you know, people they've grown up with. Like, they, they, yeah, these are their loved ones. And if, one of the reasons I love doing flash composites is it's great for group shots, and it kind of it reinvigorates them for me. It makes me love something that's important to my clients. And, and again, most importantly, it makes me love something that most other photographers hate. Um, because again, if I can do what other photographers aren't, if I can zig wherever other people are zagging, then, um, then that's when I get clients because I'm not doing, I'm not just competing, I'm not doing the same thing everyone else is and competing on price. I'm doing you know, things with a little bit of ragged edges. Um, so for whatever reason, you know, they, they love this. But the, the real thing is, like, how hard would this have been to light if I had to do it in one shot? It's possible, basically. You know? I mean, shooting with snoots, shooting with grids, uh, you know, setting up, hiding flashes, different powers. Um, you know, first of all, I can't do that without heavy, heavy permits um, you know, in Central Park with all the kind of lights I need to set up. And, um, you know, and secondly, I don't have that time and, and to, do, to do it all in the rain. Um, so what I had was two minutes. The, the, you know, the posing is the hard part. This is, this is another one that was just, uh, this was the smaller version of this, but just like a little softbox. This is four frames. Guy stands here, boom. Guy stands here, boom. Guy stands here, boom. Guy stands here, boom. We're done. Two minutes to shoot, and um, as I'll show you in a second, it takes about two minutes to Photoshop. So four minutes for a photo that's going to be something very, very, very different than we could have gotten otherwise. And sneaking <coughs> light in under an umbrella like that without lighting the umbrellas, you know, something, whatever it is about this, Potential clients see that photo and they're, they're like, okay, here's our checkbook. You should use the tripod. I often don't because I'm a bad person. Um, but the, you know, the, the first rule if you want to make your life easy, use a, use a, use a tripod. Um, and that, that's, a, that's a good say because I'm going to show you exactly how to do this.
use a tripod. <laughs> and then I don't. I'm a bad person. Um, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get a, a bunch of frames that are exactly the same. If, you have, if those four frames are exactly the same except one person is lit, then my life is easy. Then my Photoshop is easy. I can, I can layer that. If you know layers, I can layer that no problem. If you don't know <laughs> layers, um, just put one layer. Well, I'll show you. Just erase. Um, and I can do it in like five seconds. It's so, so fast and easy. Um, but if all of your settings are the same, and that means your exposure, your aperture, you know, so you know, if you set it to manual or you just lock your exposure somehow, your shutter speed, your ISO, your aperture, um, and, you know, and your white balance, whether you shot it that way or <coughs> adjusting it later, um, if everything is the same, and, and including the background because you're on a tripod, then the next steps are going to be really easy. So we've got something you know, very simple. We've got a, a group shot. Again, we're kind of going for just that Vogue effect where we want, you know, it's, n it's not, not bad. You know, it's, it's a nice little ivy wall, you know, attractive uh, girls, and you know, we could just shoot it. And you know, and be fine. But I'm and and you know, the exposure is fine. They're in shade. But here, I just so I'm not like killing the sun or anything. I just want to create some nice, um, you know, uh, texture, like a little contrast on them. So maybe smooth out, you know, anything that the makeup didn't catch, you know, and um, and, and, and again, make it look a little bit different. And also, the other thing is that I can then, in a group shot, maybe take three or four exposures of every person and then use the best one. You, so I'm using everyone's best expression out of like three or four, uh, you know, which, which makes for a much higher hit ratio, especially with a large wedding party. So here, you know, I'm, just saying that, you know, uh, I'm just taking the ones that I use just to show you what it, exactly what's happening. This was on a tripod, <laughs> so I was a good person today. So, um, so he comes through. Now what you want to do, I want to keep things as simple as possible because my aperture is the same. Um, so if I can set, put it on a manual flash setting, I will. Uh, that makes my life simple. As, long as then you need to let your assistant know he just has to be the same distance from everything he's lighting. Because if he's clo much closer to one, inverse square law again, they're going to be a lot brighter uh, than the rest. So he comes in, I mark the distance, say you know, about that same, same level. Now here he is, he's lighting on the left. One more here. One more, and like they don't, once they're done, like they can go and chill. You know, I've, I've had some where you know, large wedding party, and it was freezing, and like you know, every moment they're not being shot, uh, they're wearing jackets, <laughs> right? They're you know, they're warm up, um, even though this this whole process this took probably a minute and a half. We're not talking about a lot of time once you get used to it. And then last one, and then we we stick them together. And you know, it's not. This is not one where I was going for intense drama, where I was trying to, you know, uh, shoot an F45 shot or something. But it adds something more that they, you know, that they wouldn't have had. Something. Sometimes it's the subtle stuff that, you know, that's even, uh, even better because you don't look at it and say, "Oh, that was Photoshop." You say, "Huh? Wait, what?" You know, like especially if you're not. Uh, you know, an uh, expert photographer, or, you, know, you just look and go, wow, okay, that's nice. <laughs> and, and, and if you're looking through 20 other photographer's sites and then you see one that's like, I don't see that anywhere else, that's nice. <laughs> um, so one of the things that's you know, a very, if you want to get a couple good shots very, um, uh, and, and use this very simply, start with the silhouette because then you start with a silhouette. You've got your background. You've got interest, you know, You've got something interesting. Now, for me, for silhouettes, you know, I, again, I'm, I'm letting them know. I'm saying, okay, this is all body language. I can't see your expression. So it's all, you know, how you turn, closeness but not separation, not a bear hug. You know, it's all about shapes. Um, but I start with a silhouette. Then I've got all my settings for a nice, great background. You know, for things like this. And then I've just got to light them. Um, and now expression matters. So you know, same background, you know, same setting, and this is something. This was another. I'm sure this was auto FP, one eight thousandth of a second, um, which means my flash is really, really weak. So to, to overcome that, to have a really weak flash be stronger than the sun, um, I'm lighting in really close. Again, what you're seeing from this is you're seeing dramatic fall off. 
this looks like I was using a diffuser, but you're still, you know, the, the follow-up is on the arms, I'm not lighting everything, and I'm creating something that's a very, very different effect than if I just brought a 3200 watt second, you know, uh, white lightning and just nuked it. Tilt shift in this, this is a tilt shift. Yeah, yeah. You can see, well, you yeah, have some of the backgrounds in focus, some of the backgrounds out of focus. That's just again, just to like mix it up a little bit, kind of an artsy couple. So um, there's a there's a say there's, there's an old joke. Yes, you know, somebody's somebody's looking around on the floor, is, and a guy comes in and he goes, "How oh, hey, could you help me? I, you know, I dropped my contacts." And he says. Um, Okay, great. Well, where'd you drop them? About 20 feet that way. <laughs> like, well, why are you looking here? Oh, the light's better here. <laughs> right? It's a joke, you know. But in in photography, you know, that's a lot of what what we do is that if you're in a situation that's not working, if you're in a place, you know, you know whatever, you know, and it's just not working for you, gather yourself up again, find you know whether it's a different place, different time, you know, different scenario, and find out you know how you can make it work. Um, in a, you know, uh, in a different, at a different time, even. So one of the things that I like to do is take couples out for five to ten minutes. Uh, at, you know, at the end of the night, after all the stuff of the reception is done, and I tell them this ahead of time. I say, "Look, um, we're going to do some portraits, and and let's do some night portraits." And I do this for a few reasons. First of all, we're talking about lighting, and I tell them, "Like, look, high noon is for gunfights." Um, but if I think romance, especially like an urban environment, I'm thinking nighttime. Like that's when romance happens. Um, if you want to have something that's an inherently romantic photo, you know that's about that's, you know, that's nighttime. That's that's a lot more romantic than if I shot it at noon. The, but the the rules are, especially on a wedding day, where I'm taking somebody out of the reception. Um, First of all, let, let them know ahead of time. Talk to them. I talk. I tell this to people in the in the, the the first client meeting. You know, maybe a year before their wedding. Like, hey, we might want to schedule five to ten minutes of your reception to take some photos. Um, second, if I'm saying five five minutes, I better take four minutes. Right? This is their wedding reception. They have better things. The wedding's not about you. Um, so, I don't want to say, hey, well, five minutes. Then half an hour later, they've missed their reception. So what you're doing here, that the other, you know, the other great thing about this, is that one of the, the tricks of commercial photography is to do as much as you can ahead of time. So the great thing about uh, nighttime portraits also is that you've been in that spot now for hours, and you've been doing your thing, you've been shooting around, but you've you know, been looking at it in the side of your mind and said, oh, that's that's going to be great uh, once nighttime comes along. Um, and you know, the more you do it again, the more you see. Like, you know, if you look for those those great lights, look for those great situations that um, that's going to be beautiful at nighttime. So a lot of times, silhouettes are great at night because then you're not aiming for like an intense ISO 100,000 exposure because you're keeping the subjects dark, right? Um, and and you're also showing the scene like you know how it was. These are just ambient lighting. This is just seeing the scenario because again. On a sunny day, you've got sun, and, and that's, what it, that's what it looks like. But if, there's so much, especially in a city, to play with. Just, like, just go around, like tonight, like we're at like, 5 p.m., it's going to be dark, right? Like, just go around and just look at stuff and go, wow. <laughs> and, like, you know, hold your hand up. To, like, again, if you're close to light, you know, then all of a sudden, like, things get really dramatic. And, you know, Photographers are freaks, right? We walk around and we just let, we look at stuff in different ways. One of the, the the most the best gifts that being a photographer has is that you see the world differently, right? Because you spend so much time looking around and seeing things that you know ninety eight percent of the best photos I took I just took with my eyes and, and they're for me because I'm always seeing the world in, in, in different ways and that's such a gift. So so walk around and just look at stuff and be like. Okay, I could, I could put somebody there. I could, you know, what happens? You know, hands are great for seeing how light works. You know, so I'm, I'm looking at this light, and you know, it's doing some things here. But you know, if I bring it up close, all of a sudden I'm seeing the fall off. I'm seeing the reflectivity. I'm seeing the lines in my hands. I'm seeing very, very different things. And then, then when you start working with client after client after client, you start seeing like, look, we've got cameras that can, you know, go to at least 3,200 ISO 
in, you know, probably within a few years, like a billion, uh, with, and still turn out uh, uh, decent photos. And that's all you need. I mean, this is a tilt shift, so it's only an f2.8 lens. So, I mean, it's unnatural because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the light, but it's, um, you know, it's, you know, it's natural from the scene. It's just, you know, uh, a lot of, a lot of floodlights these days are, are just, you know, yellowish, greenish, and then of course you can play, play with the white balance and see, you know, what works best uh, for you for that scene. And same thing. That's the actual, you know, light of the, of the scenario. So, w the other gift, as I was talking about, of nighttime, is that you can work with continuous lighting. I love continuous lighting because again. We're working fast, especially if, is, if I talked about if you tell somebody five minutes, you want it to take four minutes. Now, if you're setting up strobes, the one, you know, strobes are strong because they only got to go for like for one little second, um, you know, one one hundred thousandth of a second sometimes. Um, but you can't see them <laughs> like ahead of time, you know, unless you're setting up studio lights and a modeling light, and even then, it's a little bit different. Um, where like video light. Continuous light, lighting, it's just a light. Like, it's just, that's it, it's a light. And whatever you see is what you get. So if I want perfect Rembrandt lighting on her face, like, oh, there we go, done. Like, there it is. Uh, it's, I'm working very, very quickly. I'm seeing even things that are complicated, like where's the shadow of the nose falling? I'm seeing that really, really quickly. And then I'm ready, and then all I gotta do is shoot it. <laughs> and it's gonna look like what I see, because there's, you know, there, there's nothing there. And there's no syncing problems, because um, I use everything. I use um, Radio Poppers, Pop Pocket Wizards, uh, you know, Line of Sight, CLS, um, everything. And everything has its own opportunities, and everything has its own problems. And things that you would think no one could ever make fail, um, I, you know, they fail on me all the time. And they always fail exactly when you don't want them to fail. Well, there's no syncing. Like, you could be a million miles away. <laughs> with a really good telephoto lens and have somebody standing next to them with a video light, and who cares? There's nothing to sync. It's just a light. So um, you, know, if it, it's, you can have the, the light source behind, um, and I have done this actually, behind a vault door, and there's no syncing. There's nothing to deal with. There's no, um, there's no radio interference. It's just light. So here, this can be simple. This can be, um, I just want to add some contrast to her face. It's not even a you know, dark scenario. So, but uh, it's dark enough that I can get away with the video light and just a little contrast, just bring it out. And, you know, yeah, it looks better over there, but, um, you yeah, know, bring that color out, bring that pop, uh, you yeah, so that we can see that. And you did this with a video light? Yeah. Yep, yeah, that, uh, probably that little micro pro right there. Um, the name is micro the, the little, the smaller one here. Yeah, this is the, the light panel micro pro. This is real small. Again, for me, I'm kind of quirky. Again, because I'm, I'm just fitting things into the bag. I, I buy things primarily for how they fit in my bag. <laughs> so like this one is the length. Like it packs with this. And I usually pack a 70 to 200 on my other one. And this is the length of a 70 to 200. So this one, of course, a little larger. will be a little bit softer, especially when I get close. And what I like about this one, you know, the batteries aren't on right now. But, um, Are they pricey? They, these are. You can also buy, there's all, um, uh, these are some of the more expensive brands. Um, but uh, but B&H, I know, sells, like, the, there's, there's a whole range. Yeah, you just walk downstairs and, and um, like, I got this to test from B&H, and, and uh, I was like, I got to, okay, I got to buy it. I got to keep it. And I haven't actually reviewed it because I like it too much. I don't want other people using it. Um, <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I, you know, I always uh, um, bring an assistant um, again because I'm working quickly, so it's much faster for like me to just tell a dude to stand there with his hand. Um, I, I always have an assistant on wedding days anyway. A lot of engagement shoots, I tend not to, and you know, I'll just stick up a quick stand, put it on a bag, you know, uh, put it anywhere. Even like a monopod, again, they're really light, and I'm not dealing with sinking issues, so I can so I can just aim it uh, mono, you know, mono, at the end of a monopod real easy if I want to do it uh, on a portrait shoot. So on a normal wedding day, I usually, I, I used to, uh, for some time I had like exactly 12 items so that I could, uh, I could always sing the Sesame Street 12 song, you know, if, and <laughs> see if I was missing anything. I like to just keep my bag full so that if at the end of the day, because uh, we've got, 
Well, one of my assistants uh, stepped out. Um, uh, Josh from here has a system man to shoot. He knows, like, I leave like a trail of gear like behind me because you know because I'm hyperactive. I want to shoot everything. Like, oh, here, here, this camera down. Run, yeah, run, run. Um, so I want to know at the end of the day, okay, <laughs> if there's a hole in my bag, something was missing somewhere. Um, you know, my prim my primary is that you know I've, I've got two D three S's. Um, you know, 35, 85 uh, are sort of my meat. Uh, 24, 14, also a lot. Um, sure, yeah, absolutely. I don't want to. Um, I want to make sure we get to to everybody. But basically, my main lenses. Um, I um, I shoot primes unless I don't, because um, you know, I just like the. I like to be able to see um, my frame before I put the camera up to my eyes. You know, I've, I've, shoot, I've shot a, hundred, a few hundred thousand photos at, at 24 millimeter, a few hundred thousand photos at uh, 35 millimeter, a few hundred thousand photos at 85 millimeter. So I don't need a camera to tell you what, it, what those frames are going to be. 85 millimeter frame is going to cover his left shoulder to her, you know, to her and cut off his knees, right from where I'm standing, right here. I've just taken the photo in my mind. So, um, and you know, I, I can check it out, and like, exactly perfect, because, um, the, you know, that way. Yeah, you know, this is what I like about frames: is that like, tell me when you start to feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, if I'm like this, like all the time, like I'm making people uncomfortable. If I'm lining up shots, and I want people to be comfortable, because I want to get those real expressions, real personalities. So if I'm taking that, I'm taking that, I'm lining up that same shot. Right now, and I'm not even looking at her, like, but I'm, I'm still, I'm lining up that shot. It's been like out of the corner of my eye, but I also, like, I'm ready. I know where it's set. So that's what I like. That and weight is what I like most about primes. Um, but the 70 to 200 is a wonderful tool. Um, so I, I always, because uh, it's much easier to zoom with your feet at the 24 millimeter range where it's like this than at the 200 millimeter range where it's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, so 7200 is, is great, especially for churches and things like that. But generally, uh, that's, that's the only uh, 12 to 24 I bring to. <coughs> Otherwise, it's mostly just fast primes. Why do you think that the Pope was right? Uh, I do. I, I've got some like on my, on my website. Uh, you yeah, know, this is, um, I, I didn't do anything too crazy <laughs> with them. Like, you know, hey, stand there, I'm going to do some flash composites. Um, yeah, so, so I didn't have them for. Uh, um, but I do. I've got like Mah I know I've got Muhammad Ali up uh, on my website. I've got Obama up on my website. Um, uh, so they're just on the, on the on the portfolio page. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. So mostly fast primes, three speed lights. Uh, you know, two camera bodies. I bring extras of everything because Murphy's law. Boy, it happens. Uh, I did a wedding in 98 degrees in an aquarium. I had four lenses fail because they were just fogged up beyond use. Um, and I still had four left. It was OK. Um, yeah, so yeah, we made it work. Um, and as people know, I kind of make a habit. Uh, people follow me. I, I break lots of stuff. <laughs> um, and so I always bring backups. Yes? The name of the soft box on the, uh, plan. Yes, this is a great, great tool. This is the LumaQuest, uh, LumaQuest Softbox LTP. I feel like they made it like just for me, um, because it's exactly the size of a 15-inch MacBook. So you can, again, I, I buy primarily based on like what I can pack. So like I stick my, lap, my, my MacBook in the bag, and I stick that in right next to it. And then, it's, so it's as large as it can be um, and still pack easily, which means that it's, it's softer like, than the old ones I used to use, because it's, it's got more surface. Uh, LumaQuest, L-U-M-I-Q-U-E-S-T, and this model is called LTP. They're they're awesome, and it does it holds the uh, the Velcro holds better than some of their older models. Um, you know, for me, I, you know, I, I'm, tr yeah, I'm either I'm either off camera or bouncing generally, and, and you don't need a softbox to bounce. Is, this help, also, is, it, is it a pocket wizard you use normally? Or you use yeah, I, again, I keep things as simple as I can, but no simpler. So if I can get away with, uh, with line of sight, uh, CLS, commander, I will, because then I can just control it from here. Now, if, I'm, if line of sight won't work, or if it's a really bright, sunny day, or things like that, 
uh, then I've got the, the pocket widgets. Now I do have the, I've, I've got the old ones for when I'm using studio lights. I've got the new pocket wizards. Um, mainly, and I still I keep I use them simply. I kind of use them like old pocket wizards. I don't use a lot of the fancy things. They can sometimes work and sometimes not. Um, but but that way I can I can use my shutter speed up to one eight thousandth of a second with the new pocket wizards, which you can't do with the old ones. Yes. What's the range of what you charge for weddings? <laughs> um, basically, I, I so I start at fifty five hundred plus tax, um, and then you can. I was thinking of instituting a uh, $20 million package with a Learjet, um, you know, and that way everything else would seem um, uh, you know, moderate. You know, they'll just go for the helicopter package. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, start at 5500 and, that, and that's pretty inclusive. I mean, the way that I treat all my clients, both in business and as a photographer, is like exactly how I would want to be treated. And I, and I tend to give them exactly what I would want. So 5500 doesn't include any products, things like that, but I am there for the full day, right? Because I want things to be comfortable and easy, and I'm like, you know, fairly young, and maybe not as young as I hopefully look, but, uh, uh, you, know, you know, energetic, and, and I want to tell that full story. That's where I am right now, and, and, and that's what I would want to. Um, what do they get for the 5500? Uh, they get, that, that's, that's me, uh, the, me and an assistant, you know, there for the full day. Mm -hmm. yeah, pr uh, products, products are separate. Albums, you know, things like that are are are, are separate. And, you know, and there's a there's a big range there. Like you know, you can get a four by six for seven dollars, or you can buy albums for thousands of dollars, right? Um, so, yeah. So, so it's starting. You know, basically, I, I I have people make all again. I want the I want to be very simple to book me, and and then the and like the decisions that you can only make once. Like, do you like your photographer or not? Were they there for the full day or not? You know, things like that. I want them to make that, be able to all be covered right from the start. But the decisions that they can make at other times, like, you know, canvases, albums, products, things like that, and they're going to be different for everyone. Now, again, if you shouldn't shoot like me, you definitely, there's no uh, pricing, things like that. These are intensely personal. Like, this works for me and works for my client base. Doesn't, you know, um, it, it doesn't necessarily mean you guys all have to go out and, and, and only offer full day packages. Um, yeah, you know, if you don't want to occasionally do 17 hour weddings. Yes? Um, uh, what do you do about albums? Do you design them? Do you outsource mm -hmm. them? Uh, I insource them. Um, basically, I've got, I have staff. Um, you know, I, I have, uh, one of the best things that I've done recently is, is I've kind of expanded my staff, moved them up to full time, so that, you know, customer service is going to be very important. I want everything leading up to the wedding and beyond to be as seamless and as perfect as the uh, wedding day itself. And now, of course, I'm a photographer. I'm an artist. So I'm not the world's best paperwork person. So I hire people that are way better than, that, uh, 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 than me at that. Um, and so they will, they will also manage the album design process. Um, again, one of the things, the most important thing, and this is the last lesson, and you know, some people can get up, or we can all chat, whatever. The most important thing, if you're in this for the long haul, do whatever it takes for you to keep loving it. Like, and it sounds maybe selfish, but it's not. Because if you love it, and if you're energized, your clients are going to get better photos. They're going to get photos with energy. You know. So again, I did 71 weddings this year. Um, and I love it more than ever. I'm not burned out. I'm excited. And I, want, you know, like, I can't wait to, you know, to, to shoot my spring weddings. Like, I can't wait. Um, and again, for me, it's because I'm. I'm looking at the people, I'm looking at what's exciting me, and the things that aren't maybe exciting me, like album design, you know, for me it's valuable to, to, to give to somebody else. What, what would you say is an average number of shots that you take at an mm -hmm. average wedding, and has that changed since going from film to yeah. digital? Well, yeah, from film to digital, definitely. Because um, uh, I take, uh, I will now currently, on average, take maybe 2,500. Now again, I do full day weddings. Um, you know, so that we're talking about two shooters. Uh, yeah, well, well, me and an assistant uh, usually. Uh, Ninety percent of the time, I don't have a full second photographer. It's just me and an assistant. Um, but you know, a lot of times we're also talking about like, you know, are your eyes open on this one? You know, and, and that also includes. We haven't even talked about the Brandeiser method. You know, if any of you know that, which is a panorama, which basically means I'm taking 80 shots up to 80 to usually like you know, 40 or something to take one photo, right? Because I do a lot of panoramas. So that inflates the count a little bit too. Um, 
that's something some people take 400 and, and are great. Some people take like 8,000. I don't understand how they do it, but they're great. So th that's another thing that you know, everyone has different philosophies on. But I don't, I don't mash the shutter. I'm not, I don't go, <laughs> you know, like that's 2,500, like boom, there, around, like look, look boom. Yeah, I'm, uh, as people that have seen me shoot uh, can, can tell, like I'm all over the place. Anything about the special shots or just get everything? I mean, um, I get, you know, it's not good everything like being slapdash. You know, you're, you're always being very smart about what's great, but I shoot a, for me, it's not just, I mean, we're talking about portraits because that's what easy, what's easy to teach, but 98% of the day, I'm there to tell stories about moments, about people. And that can be anywhere and everywhere. And I want to tell a broad story, and I want to give them lots of photos because I don't know, you know, uh, what's going to be extra important to them? What's going to be important later? You know, um, you know, what random guest is going to die? You know, that's happened. I mean, you do 250 weddings. Um, you know, it's it, you know, it's happened. If you can take great, if I can be there, take great photos of, of all the guests or as many people as possible, like that's valuable. You know, not everyone's going to. You know, you put in, like a room of 300 people. Not everyone's going to see each other uh, again. Like, uh, you know, so so these things. That you know, they they really are important. I mean, if you do your job right, I mean, it's not morbid. It's just it, this is this is our job. It's important. We are taking the photos that are going to be on people's caskets. You know, for me, in ways, wedding photography is way more important than shooting for the cover of Vogue. Way more. That's my opinion. Don't tell the guy that she's covers a vote, and I, I know some of them. Um, but like, does the world really need another photo of Jack Nicholson? No, but like, we've got enough, <laughs> in my opinion. But what I'm doing, you know, this is important. So keep your energy in it. So guys, thank you so much for coming. Um, and, and hopefully that was helpful. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.